All right. Hello. I am with Grace Ellis. And uh, Grace Ellis is a New York Times bestselling comic book writer and creator. Her first book, Lumberjanes, which was published by Boom Studios, is an Eisner Award winning series about monster fighting Girl Scouts. She is also known for Moonstruck, which was published by Image Comics, and Lois Lane and the Friendship Challenge. Oh, nice. You got them right there. I, I'm learning this, this process. <laughs> I've, I've learned to keep them with me. Those were published by DC Comics, correct? Uh, Lois Lane, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And um, she's also known for her work in television. Her upcoming book is a uh, historical based on a true story graphic novel about suspense writer Patricia Highsmith. And that's going to be published by Abram Books. You can follow Grace on Twitter at Grace C. Ellis or find her website at ohheygraceellis.com. So Grace, how are you? I'm great. How are Thanks. you? <laughs> Doing well. Um, it's always exciting to talk comics and graphic novels. Yeah. Uh, I guess to start with, I'm going to start with a question that one of our teens, um, his name is Jay Wilkert, had submitted. And it's one of the ones I kind of wanted to ask you as well. Okay. So he wants to know, at what age did you know you would be a writer? Oh, OK. So I, I remember very clearly being in like fourth or fifth grade and being like, I think that writing is like the thing that I want to do. Um, and I was like, I was a really good student and like other things, but nothing came as easily as writing, you know? Uh -huh. um, so I just was pretty single-minded about it from there on out, you know? I just want to make stuff up. So and, around that time, were you reading comics then? Well, the comic scene for kids was really different. When like you and I were growing up, there wasn't the same breadth of books for kids but I was really into comic strips specifically I had oh. like like the essential Calvin and Hobbes the yeah best I check Christmas, those out all the time from the, the best Christmas gift, gift I ever had oh my god I still have it it's like worn completely through now it's so good and I would Wait. like read the like black and white daily strips in the back of the newspaper and like the Sunday comics were like a huge deal for me and oh yeah for, for some reason it never really occurred to me that that, that, that would be like a job that you could do but right. <laughs> you know, it, felt, it feels like Garfield just like popped into the universe in the Big Bang or something you know right you know? yeah he like he was just there eating lasagna he probably what that was a bad example Garfield probably was <laughs> <laughs> like it like the Big Bang was happening and he was just eating it all <laughs> yeah right <laughs> it, it might have exploded from his stomach who knows we, we don't know that it didn't <laughs> yeah, it's <Hopefully>. true <laughs> So, so besides those, like, it, like you mentioned Calvin and Hobbes and Garfield, which I was totally reading too, because lifelong reader of comics here as well. Um, you know, like in middle school, I can distinctly remember like manga becoming a bigger thing. Mm -hmm. Were you like ever into that? Like Sailor Moon or anything like that? I, I know that it was like a thing other places, but it wasn't, I, I don't remember it at all. I, I don't remember any weebs at my school. <laughs> However, maybe they were there and I'm like doing them a great disservice by not remembering <laughs> them at all. But I, yeah, I don't even remember coming into contact with any anime at all. I think it's great now. I, it's really sure. great, so like ubiquitous, but yeah, I don't know. I just That's really it. interesting. Yeah, I, I distinctly remember going to my library and seeing like Sailor Moon and like in sixth grade and just like, oh, this is cool. Yeah. And, and all that other stuff. Yeah, I, I didn't like, look at I I was like vaguely aware of Sailor Moon like growing older older than that but I don't think I like read any Sailor Moon or watched any Sailor Moon until I was in like my mid-20s and I was like this is great people should know about this there's no shame like you know like I feel like it took me forever to discover bone you know it was like yeah. late 20s I was like yeah. oh bone's a thing oh yeah the, <laughs> that was actually that was when they announced that they were shutting down our library system for COVID I like ran over to the library to pick up my stuff and they were like are you here to stock up and I was like I guess so and they had the essential bone or the the like complete bone and I was uh -huh. like I guess now's the time so I read all of bone that was the that was like my my big COVID read did not did you like it. Time. I did. I thought it was great. I think it's so it's so unique and like vivid. It's great. Right. And really good. I think it's a really good kind of gateway entry, entry level gateway book into like the fantasy realm. 
definitely definitely because it's it's such a fleshed out world you know but it's so friendly in terms of like understanding right. and explaining right it's like it's like humorous token or something i don't know <laughs> mm-hmm. exactly. um, so let's 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 move on. Um, you you mentioned libraries. So libraries played an important role with you becoming a writer. Oh, for sure. I I we I went to the library like constantly when I was a kid. I always had a ton of stuff out. I would like go and hang out. Did a lot of like the library programs. Um, would like ride my bike to the library in the summer, stuff like that. And now I live like just a couple blocks away from one of the Columbus, Ohio library branches, and it's. Oh, neat. Spectacular. I love it. That's awesome. Columbus, Ohio is a great place, by the way. We, Thank you. I, 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 I have family it. there, so we, yeah, we visit it's, occasionally. It's a, it's a fun, fun city. Totally. German village. Ooh. Oh, I, I love German <laughs> village. Oh, there's a house for sale down there right now. And it's like, oh man, <laughs> is this the one? It's not. It's so. And then there's that, like, there's like, that, I forget the name of the bookstore. There's that, we're, we're off topic here, but there's that gigantic bookstore. Yeah. That's just like a labyrinth. The book loft. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. It's gigantic. It's like 27 rooms or something. And when you first walk in the doors, there's graphic novels. Yep. Yeah. What a they great are, place for them. They're phenomenal for graphic novels. It's great. It's awesome. Anyway, this is a an advertisement for Columbus now. But you can yeah. drive here. Go visit Columbus. <laughs> Grace will meet you for coffee when it's non-COVID time. Yeah, <laughs> all of our coffee shops are decimated now. So good luck in general. Anyway, <laughs> that's very dark. Never mind. Oh man, that's so sad. But you yeah. know, that's that's true. Um, I feel I feel for a lot of the coffee shops and places that you just can't go and hop in and hang out anymore, you know? Right, so, right. Um, it's like you're making it through. I know. So so I guess to start, you're known for Lumberjanes. Yes. Which is a, it, it won an Eisner Award, right? It won a couple, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Um, it's about monster fighting Girl Scouts, which is super cool. Mm-hmm. Really awesome idea. Um, and then, you know, co- as you know, comics, comic writing and creating tends to be often a collaborative affair. Yes. So I was wondering, and then this seemed to be the case with Lumberjanes, like you just didn't create that in a vacuum, right? Yes, that's correct. Um, so I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about how Lumberjanes came to fruition and what it's like to collaborate with others on a project like that. Yeah, well, okay. So I went to college for journalism and theater because um, what I really wanted to do was write scripts, but that's like a very scary career prospect because it's just like, I don't know, how do you do but that? But also so, similar to writing comics. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, so. I, I was working for this website and I, I made a lot of friends and one of those friends I knew was some kind of an, like an editor, didn't really have a good idea of what she did. We would like, would occasionally like make zines together. We tabled the LA Zine Fest together and that was really fun. So when nice. she was like, do you want to like write a comic? I was like, yeah, of course, sure, whatever. This will be like another like little silly side project. And it was Lumberjanes and my friend was Shannon Waters, who is like an editor at Boom Studios. Um, And I had no idea that that was like kind of a big deal and that she was asking (laughs) me to do something that was kind of a big deal. Um, So we just like sat down and started typing in this Google document and uh, we brought in Brooklyn Allen to do the art and then we brought in Noelle Stevenson to help me write it because I'd never written a comic before. but I really like script writing and one of the one of obviously one of the things that I really like about it is that your job as a script writer is to set someone else up for success and to bring out their best qualities. Um, it's not there are barely any I can't think of any but I don't want to say all there's like no no scripts are meant to be read by the general public. Um, it's just a, especially a comic script is just like it's for you and the artist and you build something together. So you right. want to leave like holes in the script that the artist can fill in, you know, you should be talking to each other the whole time. And I think that the Lumberjanes team was a, it's, it was a really good team because everyone was on the same page. Everyone was rowing in the same direction all the time. Um, we had a very clear vision of what we wanted from the book, you know? 
I mean, I think Girl that- Girl Scouts fighting monsters. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, I mean, from the beginning, the idea was like, what is fun? Let's do the fun thing, you know? <laughs> so it was, it was a really, it was a good team in that way. And I mean, the, the three of them are just such fun people in general, and they're all so unbelievably creative that it was, it was a breeze, genuinely. It was fun. I like it. They're a good team. <laughs> um, so another one from our friend Jay Wilkert. He says, who is your favorite character from Lover Jane's? His ah. is April. Uh, April? April is a good one. Um, I've, <laughs> people ask me this question all the time and I never <laughs> know how to answer because which of, which of the, your five children is like your favorite child, you know? Right. I have an answer now and it's Bubbles the Raccoon. I love Bubbles the Raccoon and I cannot get enough. It's the the like coonskin hat that like isn't really a hat. It's a raccoon. It's a <laughs> and we we named we named him uh, Bubbles because the joke was like he's like rabid. So he's got a lot of like foamy bubbles. He's not, but like that was the original idea for it. <laughs> I, also raccoons are just awesome. Yeah. What's not to like? Yeah, right. They're Crash so round. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, he also wants, Jay also wants to know, how long does it usually take you to write just like one issue? That's a great question. Um, it varies a lot depending on what you're writing. Um, you have to be pretty quick. I can do a 22 page comic. A week is more than enough time to make that mm. happen for me. Um, this Patricia Highsmith comic that's coming out at the beginning of next year, they gave me six months to write it. It did, did not take me six months to write. Um, yeah, when you're doing monthly comics, the deadlines are especially important, especially for a writer, because if you fall behind, then everyone else ahead, like behind you is going to fall behind. And that then all sense. of a sudden you're missing deadlines, right? Mm -hmm. Um, like publishing deadlines and then, then your book is late, um, right. which is terrible. <laughs> no and then people are burning down comic book stores saying, right. <laughs> where is the next Grace Ellis issue? And like, nobody wants that. I don't nope, want that. Nobody wants that. Right. Yeah. I want you to read it. <laughs> so, I mean, it's basically just like a race to see how fast you can get it done. Um, and there's, there are things that you can do for yourself before that. You, I do a lot of pre-writing. Um, so I like know exactly, exactly where I'm going, like down to the page for sure. You do um, a lot of, um, you know, like uh, a lot of just like authors in general, they'll write like huge, huge backstories for their characters, even though that's not really important for the central story. Do you do I, any of that? Or? Not really. I, I try not to do a lot of extraneous writing just out of like laziness, but, <laughs> but I, okay. So there's this- I don't blame you. <laughs> there's, there's this musical, um, Sunday in the Park with George. I love this show. I think it's such a great depiction of what it's like to like work in the creative field, but there's a song in it called Finishing the Hat. And it's about how, when you're going through your everyday life, part of your brain is still like back at the canvas, finishing the hat. Um, even while you're like washing the dishes, part of you is like thinking right, about your part. Right. And that is like 100% where I am. It's just uh -huh. like every second of every day, there is part of my brain that is like still working on writing so that when I sit down to do it, it's like, it's, it's pretty fast, you know? That makes sense. Yeah. You hear, you hear about, you know, like, um, not just creatives, but, you know, like Albert Einstein having some of his best theories come to him in the shower, you know? Exactly. So, but I will say too, in addition to like the shower, something that I've like had to like remind myself is to like, don't put on music and don't put on a podcast because then your brain stops doing that. You know, you have to, you have to let your mind like be a little bit bored. So it starts chewing on like creative problems. So like when you go down to write, you do you not put on music at all? Or at that point, can you listen to music? Sometimes I can. It depends really heavily on what the music is and what the project is. Like I have a Patricia Highsmith playlist <laughs> that I mostly made as a way of procrastinating. Um, but I like listen to it a little bit or I'll listen to it to get in the mood to write is like probably more typical. What, what's on it? Can I ask? Yeah, it's... It's so funny, the artist who is not announced yet, it's like kills me. I would love to just like brag about her forever. Sorry, Spotify is opening. Um, she made a playlist too, and hers is very different from mine. Mine is mostly like music from the 50s, and hers uh -huh. is like 
modern pop music that's more of like what the character is like interesting yeah so we've got let's see oh some stuff from the la noir soundtrack too classic some billy holiday doris day um something from the musical pal joey because patricia highsmith really loved pal joey for some reason super weird um bing crosby peggy lee stuff like that yeah mm -hmm. yeah you know it's fun let's see what's another great question for you here so all right yeah coming back to the whole will eisner award um obviously we were funded to do this whole shenanigan here at the library through the the will eisner graphic novel growth grant which is a super awesome grant for libraries um and I guess I want to know what's it like to win the Will Eisner Award and um, and to have your work be recognized by the comics industry. Is it like a real big deal to you, or are you just like, eh, it's cool, but like I'm just glad people are reading my stuff? I think it's a little of both. It feels really surreal. I have the like trophy. I first of all, I should say that I was not at the ceremony because um, we didn't have enough tickets for the whole team or something. I'm not really clear on that, it doesn't matter. But it's, so it feels like I'm a little removed from it anyway. Sure. I have the trophies like hidden in my study so I could like look at them, but only if I seek them out, you know? Yeah. It's, I don't know, it's, it's a nice like selling tool yeah. <laughs> for sure. Um, and it's nice to be recognized, you know? Um, I tend to think of awards more as like, cultural events um, and like reading lists. So I like to look at the Eisner nominations, especially. Oh yeah, yeah. Like what what did I miss this year that I should have read? And Absolutely. Then I, and I read those. Um, and that that to me is really valuable as like a reader. So I absolutely recommend doing that. That's how I've read some of my favorite. So comments. jumping off that, jumping off that, what what books from the recent like list caught your eye and you read that you enjoyed? Oh, let's let's look up. <laughs> funny. Okay. Nope, that is not what I wanted. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, technology is doing us dirty today. I don't know if you're a David Bowie fan or not, but the past year or so they published a biography. A graphic novel biography of David Bowie. Did you see that one? No, I didn't. And that must have been after I did. I did like a blitz where I read like a ton of. I don't know if it. I don't know if it made the list or not. But oh, it, you should pick it up if you can find it. I forget the author, but it's amazing. Oh, last year was the year that Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. Just like crushed everyone. That's right. I love that book. I. I love Mariko, first of all, just like person to person. I think she's like the coolest person who's ever lived, but I love that book. It's definitely one of my top favorites of all time. Um, oh yeah, Guts, Rand Talgemeyer, that's a big, a big one. We have that here at the library. Of course. I, I hadn't read the, um, the George Takei, They Call This Enemy until- I haven't read it I'm yet, it. but I'm, I plan on it. You'll, you'll like it. It's really, it's a really interesting book. It's. I, yeah, it's great. I recommend And I'm a big Star Trek fan, so I'm just like, why haven't I read this yet? I don't know. Some, sometimes you just like see a book and you're like, I will like this anyway. And you just like, don't read it. I think it's because, it's because my wife, my wife and I went to, um, to San Francisco like a year or two ago and, and Golden Gate uh, area has the whole, there's a museum that's dedicated to the Japanese internment. Yeah. That's basically where they were interned. Yeah. And I think it's just like, that's such a horrible subject. You know, it's so such horrific yes. subject matter. Just like, yeah. I gotta be in the right frame of mind to read that. Yeah, it's not not really something you just like pick up on a Saturday morning and are like, <laughs> yeah. oh, this will be like- Yeah, this is Garfield. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. but, but very important at the same time. For sure, like, yeah. Those sort of stories are being told and, and especially in comic book form. Yeah, I was, I was just gonna say, I especially, I, I think the graphic novels are really good. It's an especially good medium for something like that because first of all, I think the fact that you're like looking at it makes a really big difference. And second of all, unlike film or television, you can look at one image for a long time, you know? And I think that also makes a really big difference and it makes it really impactful. Right. Um, so yeah, we're kind, of a, we're kind of starting to get on this subject. Um, who are some of your favorite graphic novel, comic writers and artists and why? Oh, okay. 
Well, Mariko Tamaki is like loving it. I think, okay, so I really like Mariko. Obviously, I'm a big Alison Bechtel fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. Um, I really admire Ryan North's writing a lot. He's um, wonderful. I think, okay, so I think what the three of them have in common specifically is they all use the medium of like graphic novels in a really smart way. They're not, they're not just like, this is the story I want to tell and I work in comics, so I'll make it a comic, you know? They're like, what are the strengths of comics? What can I, how can I use the tools that comics offer to like tell the story in the most compelling way possible? And then they do that. And that is like something that I strive for in my writing too. Just like very, very thoughtful and intentional, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And Ryan North is just a funny dude. Oh, he's so funny. It's, it's like, it's messed up. Every time he tweets anything, I'm just like, why do I, why do I even try? <laughs> like, be funny at all. <laughs> um, let's see here. Jay also asks, what motivates you? Okay, thank you, Jay, for all of these questions. These are great questions, genuinely, I mean that. Um, what motivates me? Okay, I have a couple of different things I wanna say. First of all, I would say that day to day, you can't rely on motivation to do creative work. You have to rely on discipline. Um, and I know that I, I'm definitely, obviously not the first person to say that, but like, you can't wait for inspiration or like, any other just like feelings in order to get work done. You have to like, just do the work basically, you know? You're right. like, this is, this is my job and I'm going to do it. Or if it's not your job, then you have to say, this is, this is something that I want to accomplish, you know, like a, a concrete goal that I want to accomplish. So you can't just like wait to be motivated to do it. Um, I think that on like a deeper level, I feel motivated to tell stories because I like, I, it's, it's so strange because I, in order to like be a creative professional, you have to bet on yourself basically, where you're like, I am good enough to do this. And I like have something interesting to say, but at the same time, I'm like, I am trash. And I like, I'm not really sure why I'm still getting paid to do this. That is a joke. So you kind of have to like find a balance between those things. But I think that like deep down, I feel like I am at least decent at this. And I have something, if not interesting, then unique to say. So I'm going to like do my best to make it interesting. Hmm. You know, I I have <clears throat> my undergrad was in uh, studio art, so I can kind of relate to the to the kind of um, yeah two extremes of thinking. I, I get yeah. that. You just yeah. kind of like swing in between them wildly. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's so many people in art school struggle with that. It's yeah. It's, it's wild. I try to um, tell myself it's like I, I don't remember where I read this, um, but it's the difference between um, like taste and ability. Was that was that in Understanding Comics? I don't remember. I love Understanding Comics. Also, if you're looking for like a deep dive into like how comics work, Scott McCloud, Understanding Comics, so good. It's there's like when you're when you're not quite good enough, like you're not up to like your own standards. It's like your taste is here and your ability is here. So you're just always trying yeah. to close that gap, you know, and make yourself happy first. Right. Yeah. Gosh, I, I so relate. <laughs> um, I guess I got a few more questions for you. What advice would you give to uh, an inspiring comic book writer slash artist who wants to break into the industry? Okay. First of all, I would say to make as much work as you can. Um, because everything that you write or draw, you're going to, you're getting better than you were before. And with the addition of like, if you wake up and you draw a little comic strip and then you go to bed, you've gone to bed putting something new into the world in that day. And that's pretty awesome. You know, right. yeah. that I, that's pretty motivating for me too. If I, if I get up and I am only able to do five pages, that's five new pages in the world that you've like given birth to that day. Um, the second thing I would say is um, find people to work with, you know, if you're, if you're, especially, obviously, if you're just a writer, you're like, you should probably find some artists to work with too, or work on your own art. Um, but even if you're a writer and an artist, um, having some sort of a, a community of people that you're 
at least friends with that you can show work to, give each other feedback. You can put together a little, a little zine, a little anthology, you know? Your first, your like big projects, your like opus projects, don't try to do those right away. If just start small, do something that's like very, that you can do from like beginning to end, especially if you like finish the things that you start. If you can just do like a couple little projects with some people that you like, I think that that is like a fantastic beginning. Your advice is very similar to, um, uh, I told you I interviewed Jackie Crofts and Jan and Dan Snacky yeah. the other day and very similar to what they said. Nice, nice. So, I love so, the toe the party line. Yeah, That's no, great. just just good <laughs> advice all along, you know, like, you guys know what you're doing and know how to know how to slowly get there you know yeah it's i mean you have to just take one step every day you can't be mad at yourself for not being at the finish line immediately you know right yep yeah no nobody nobody who starts writing graphic novels just like wakes out of bed and writes moss or something <laughs> right exactly exactly yeah um so let's see here I ask you all this from Jay. I want to make sure I get Jay's questions in for you. Um, I'm not sure if I completely asked what your inspiration for Lumberjanes exactly was. I don't know. Oh, God. What I, I think that it was. Here's the thing. OK, here's the thing about like all inspiration questions. Very rarely is it just like I wanted to do a project, so I did a project there's usually some sort of other motivation. So for sure. Lumberjanes, they were like, do a comic for girls. And then we just kind of narrowed it down from there. We we're like, okay, where it's like a natural place where like it would be all girls and no parents. That sounds like a summer camp. And then it just kind of like whittles away from there. I said that in a boring voice, it was much more exciting than that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but like, like Moonstruck, you know, Moonstruck started as a five page comic. So when I was sitting down to write it, I was like, okay, five pages is not very much runway here. So what is a story that I could tell that would have like a twist on all of the page turns? So like everyone in Moonstruck is like a, a supernatural creature of some kind, but they look like they're normal. So each time there's a page turn, it's like a new reveal, you know? And that's kind of where that came from. And it just built out from there. Um, something like the, I guess, something like the Patricia Highsmith book. I don't know. I think, I think that is like probably the most like genuinely inspired thing I've ever written. Um, hmm. I, I don't think that it's very hard to have like an idea for something, but I think it is hard to have an idea that like sticks with you for a long time. Um, I mean, if, if I like, I'm reading the news in the morning. It's impossible to like not have like five ideas for like five different things, you know? But um, so what, what happened with that book was uh, I saw a play that I really loved and I was like, oh, I bet that I could do a really, really good comic adaptation of this play because I think it's an awesome story. Um, and then I was like, I don't know. I think that the fact that it's a play is like kind of important to what made to like the effectiveness. So what is a story that's like this story that would be more effective in comics? And the play was um, Indecent by Paula Vogel and it's about the first lesbian kiss on Broadway. Awesome play. Um, so I was like, I bet there is some sort of like deep lesbian history in comics that we've like never heard of. Mm -hmm. And I kind of remembered reading that Patricia Highsmith had written comics. Um, so I like did some reading and then I did some more reading and then I did like a lot of reading and I was like, I think that this is like a real idea now because it's been like months and it's really like sticking with me. Sure. You know? And like, I'll have some ideas like that that like stick around for years and like, I just feel like I'm not good enough to write them yet, something like that. Um, or I just like don't have time or I'm too lazy to like put in the work. <laughs> but, it, <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think that that, I, I think that that is how I will answer that question now is like inspiration comes from like engaging with the world and staying curious about things. Thank you for asking that question because now I know how to answer it. It's from <laughs> reading and like watching movies and going to plays. Those are the kinds of things that can inspire ideas. Right. Yes. So thank you, Jay. Thank you, Jay. <laughs> we got there. <laughs> 
He it did. took on a long and winding journey, but we got there in the end. So I'm, I'm assuming Gwen is his sister. And Gwen writes, I really enjoy your comics. You are very creative. This, by the way, this is more of a, not a question. It's a, she just wants to let you know what she thinks. Okay, uh, <laughs> okay, I'm ready. So she says, I, I really enjoy your comics. You are very creative. Your comics are unique and fascinating. I read almost every issue. My favorites are chapters 54 and 56 with the magic kitties. I also <laughs> like chapter 71 because of the backstory and the ending of the diary was sad. I love that. I love the specificity. Thank you so much for reading all of those books. That's so sweet of you. Well, what would you like to do in the future? Like what, what, what's a project you would like to do in the future? We'll end on this note. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I think that, so I, I have this Patricia Highsmith book coming out, not for kids, definitely not for kids. Right. And I really liked that. I like writing for kids, but I also liked writing something where I didn't have to worry about like swearing. And that was nice. So I think that I would like to do some more adult stuff. Um, adaptations are pretty fun. I would do one of those. I mean, this Patricia Highsmith book is like, I, we've been calling it like an adaptation of reality. If it were a prose book, we would call it a historical novel, but it's confusing when you call it something like a historical graphic novel, because it's like, is that fact or fiction? So mm. like, Mm -hmm. trying to figure out how to like parse that. Is there, but, is there anything particular you would want to adapt? Um, I have a, a list, but I don't, I can't think of anything that's on it. I, now I feel like I've never, I've never like read a book in my life now all of a sudden. Um, <laughs> You're on the spot. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I, so I, oh, okay. How about this? So it's been two years now. Um, but I, I saw 10 high school productions of Mamma Mia um, and like did a lot of interviews with like the directors and the kids and stuff. Um, and I would like to sit down and finish writing that. <laughs> <laughs> I just haven't had a chance. I haven't had enough time to sit down and finish it. But I think it's going to be something really special when it's done. That's what I would like to do in the future. Neat. Mamma Mia. There you go. What a show. Well, thank you for chatting with us. And of course, this was so fun. Yeah, and I'm sure Jay and Gwen are going to be so excited to hear your answers. Yeah, thank you. Thank you to Jay and Gwen. That was, those were such fun questions, like genuinely very thoughtful questions. I appreciate that. Yeah, and then 